Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. This lesson, I'm going to show you how to create a little bit more of an advanced login script, and this may be the one that you're a little bit more interested in. This would be something that you could redistribute. This is involving a database, kind of more of the 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 advanced, complex, modern type login script that you might imagine when you hear <laughs> someone say login script. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the things that I have changed here because I what I did, just so you know, is I took this folder for the simple one and I just completely copied it over into the all the all the files over into this advanced one. And then I only had to change a few things. So, for example, I want to show you, we talked a lot about the index file last time. Well, the index file here hasn't actually changed. And that was one of the reasons why doing it this way is works really well is because we're just calling methods and I can you know I can verify the login and verify the session however I want. That's not going to change. So whether I'm using a, a text file or I'm using a database, none of this stuff sort of changes. So there's a lot of stuff that we didn't have to change here. So I'm going to go through the stuff that that did change. Now, the first sort of big one that's going to have changed is the config file. And that's because we're no longer putting creating our users array in here and storing our usernames and passwords in the config file. We're going to be storing them in a database. So here, this is probably more like a regular config file that you might see where it has the database details in here. So we have the username, the password, the database name, the database host, and then the character set. And then along with that, I'm going to go ahead and close that because we really won't be talking about that too much anymore. Um, I also have this load file and in it I have config.php and now I have a new one to class db.php and then to login.php. So we had config and login before, now we've added this db.php because we're going to be interacting with the database. That class is right here. This is a PDO based database class that I've actually written. Um, I've done tutorials and written on and, and so forth in other courses and so forth. You're obviously gonna get this with the source code that you get. I'm not gonna be going through this database in, uh, in depth, mainly because it's not really necessary for what we're doing here. This database class just works. I'll show you how to use the database class or how we're using it uh, throughout our login script. But uh, I have full other tutorials where I talk about actually writing a database script. So if you're interested in that, I would go check those out. So uh, again, class-db.php. Again, I'll, I'm going to close this because we're not going to really talk a ton about it. Like I said, config, the DB class, the login class. So I'm going to close this because we're not going to really talk about it much anymore. And so we're kind of starting to get down to just a few things uh, left here. So the two main things that we changed are this verify login and this verify session method. And then we added uh, a register method here. So let me hop over to the front and just show you this real quick. So I don't act, I've gone through and deleted all of the users. I was doing some testing. There's no users in the database right now. Actually, I can show you that real quick. If we go to users, there's nothing in here. Okay, so we obviously wouldn't be able to log in here. So I've added this link on the login page that says register here. And that takes us to this register.php page. And so I'll just go ahead and enter my details here and we'll do the password as Morris and we'll hit submit. So it says count created successfully and then we can go log in here and we'll do John and Morris. And you can see we're logged in here. And if we go to the database, now we go to users, you can see we have a user uh, username John, the password, the password is hashed, we have our name. So we're getting records in here. Now, uh, if I log out here and go to register again, and let me just try and use that same username and register. It says that username already exists. So we got some basic checking to, to, to see if usernames already exist. We got adding records to a database, being able to log in, then using that information, hashing passwords, all that sort of thing. So that's what I'm gonna uh, basically show you here in this. All right, so 
as I said, uh, the main things that we changed are verify login and verify session. But in order to get to that point, we have to do some some sort of uh, a little bit of back work. So the first thing that we need to do is actually over here in PHP my admin, which was to create our database. So if we go back here and we go to oh, let's just go home and we click on databases. Now, if you're if you're doing this on uh, a remote web server, you probably have to go in cPanel, and there's a way to do that in cPanel. You can just of course do that, um, but you can also do it from right here inside PHP my admin but you can see right here uh, under databases it says create database so I just typed in login uh, I set the collation to uh, UT UTF 8 MB 4 underscore bin I believe it was yeah right here this right now as of the time I'm recording this is the kind of the recommended generic one um, but this I've, uh, the time that I've been doing this, this sort of thing has tended to change. So depending on when you're watching this, I would just go and kind of Google what the sort of standard collation should be. There are exceptions to that. You notice there's different um, languages and stuff here. So if you're going to be using primarily with a certain language, then maybe you would consider using uh, some of those. But again, I would just look it up. I hesitate to tell you to use a particular one simply because in my experience, I've seen this kind of fluctuate and change and so forth. So I would just look it up. But in any case, you just type the name of the database and hit create. And so once you have the database, then that's when you can go over to your uh, config file and you can put in the name of the database and then on a remote server, you'll have a username and password that you create when you do that as well. So you can put that information in here. Once you've done that, then I created, a, you, you need to, you've got the database, but now you need to create the table with the fields and so forth. And so I created an install script here. So once you have your database details set in your config file, then we're going to include the config file in the database class. And you can just load this page. So you can just go to slash install.php and load this page and it will go ahead and create the table for you. Of course, if you want to create it manually, all of the information is in here. You can do that inside of PHP my admin. Once you go into a database, um, then you can go in and create tables. So create table right here, you put the name of the table, the number of columns, hit go, and it would let you enter all that information. And you've got all the data here. So ID, the name of this one is ID. It's an int, unsigned, auto. So it tells you all of the information right here for each one if you want to create it manually. In any case, uh, if we go to, once it's all done, if we go to install.php. So it's only going to create it if it doesn't exist. So we can kind of go back here. This is what it's going to return. It's going to describe that table that users table that we just created so you'll know when you go to this install script if it was actually created or not all right so then once you've got it installed if you're do using this sort of remote or whatever then uh, i would go ahead and get rid of this install script it's not necessarily going to hurt anything because um, we're not taking any sort of user input and um you know we're, we're only creating the table if it doesn't already exist but you are kind of putting your database structure out there for uh, everybody to see. And uh, I'm of the opinion to give people as little information as possible about my stuff. So um, again, I would, I would delete this off of there. All right. So with that said, we'll get rid of that. And now we've got, so now we've got our database created. We've got our tables. Now, all we need to really do is we, first we need to allow people to register and then we need to change the way we verify our logins and our sessions to match what we have in the database.